Oh my gosh. Oh, this is one of the craziest injuries I've ever seen on a box turtle, but she had to have one of her front legs amputated. Still heavy. Okay, here's Biggins. Time to get her back to Dr. Lambert for, oh my gosh. Sorry, that's gross, but she pooped, guys. <laughs> Hope you're not eating right now, but that is really good news because this is what we wanted. I'm gonna put her down real quick just to see what I see back here. Holy cow, look at this. Look what she did. I don't see any stone. I don't see any stone from the blockage, but that is good nonetheless, because that means somehow things are passing through. So it's possible that the fact that Casey and I were able to get some mineral oil down her is what's starting to make things move. So this is great because today, we're bringing her into the veterinarian, Chris Lambert, again, right now, because he's actually gonna sedate her to try to get more of that mineral oil in. And the reason is because she is so darn strong that trying to manipulate her like that, if she's not sedated at all, it, it could be injurious to her. Um, and also just way too stressful. So he's gonna do that, not a full sedation, just a little bit so that he can work with her easily, get more mineral oil into her, also more fluids, and he's gonna take an updated x-ray. And now I'm very excited to see what the x-ray shows us. All right, here she is, I'm gonna run her in, and this is another effort to try to get things moving with her because to be honest with you guys, we have talked to people, we have talked to specialists, nobody wants to do the surgery that would be required to get to that blockage. And that's because it is just so invasive and there's no guarantee that anything is going to work. So uh, this is another effort to try to get things moving and the fact that she just defecated is really, really good news. And you just dropped him off. So I said, I'll go get him. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Cool. And then he said he'll call you, we're gonna do the mineral oil today and all that, and then, you know, he's gonna awesome. give you guys a call. Okay, fingers crossed. Look at this. This is one of the craziest injuries I've ever seen on a box turtle uh, in terms of one that survived it. These new box turtles just came to us from Turtle Rescue of the Hamptons. And this guy right here, who Casey and I just named Crush, and it has nothing to do with Finding Nemo, we named him Crush because he survived an insane crushing incident with a vehicle. So. This turtle and the other two I'm gonna show you are really just unbelievable examples of the resilience that turtles overall show. Unfortunately, box turtles in the mid-Atlantic region and the Northeast and anywhere else they occur really, take to roadways. They're commonly on them because they cross them seasonally to get to different areas for different reasons or they become active after and during summer rains. And that's when they unfortunately come into contact with cars and most of them do not make it. But the turtle rescue of the Hamptons does incredible work in saving the lives of so many of these animals. So there's gonna be a link in the description of this video. I would personally love it if you guys would go check them out. They can take donations uh, because they really are doing monumental stuff with especially native species and they are responsible for why these three box turtles are in fact still around because look at how insane that injury was for this turtle. I actually want to wet crush down so you guys can see just how amazing his markings are. Look at this. These animals become so vibrant when they're wetted down. He kind of looks a little bit like Otis, but definitely different enough. No two Eastern box turtles are the same. Look at that color scheme. He's ready for Halloween. I've brought these three box turtles over to an empty pen here. This is actually the original pen that uh, we let Rockalina first explore outside for the first time before we set her up in her permanent digs. Uh, this is protected by predators. You can see the electric fence around me. They've got a nice area that floods and plenty of vegetation and pine litter. And we're gonna see how they do in here, just the three of them. So let's put Crush down. There you go, bud, enjoy. Next up, with almost the exact same injury, but on the other side, Casey named this turtle Penny, because if you look closely at her iris of her eye, it looks like a copper penny. She is another awesome example of, of the resilience that these turtles show. It's really insane to think about the fact that these animals are able to survive stuff like this, because you and I wouldn't. And this is, you know, not even the half of it of what we see, especially with the diamondback terrapins. We've had terrapins come up to nest where you can literally see exposed organs just underneath the membrane that healed over the injured plastron. 
Turtles like Penny and Crush and who you're also about to meet are excellent educational ambassadors for their species because we can take them on presentations or make videos like we're making right now to show people what these animals are facing out there because of human interaction. And in fact, we met a turtle with this exact same injury uh, just last year at the Popcorn Park Animal Refuge. Our friends over there use turtles like this to teach people about them as well because they're non-releasable. And the reason is because when this turtle goes to use the plastral hinge on the bottom to close up, she cannot fully close and neither can crush, which means a raccoon or a predator could easily just use this open area, pry her open and eat her. So instead, these animals are destined to help teach the world about the plight of wild box turtles and other species. In some ways, the stories behind these turtles are like Roccolinas because it's because of humans that they ended up in this situation. But of course, the animal's particular stories are very different. This animal was hit by a car, saved by the turtle rescue of the Hamptons, and now she's gonna live here at Garden State Tortoise as an ambassador for her species. So let's meet the next turtle. Last but certainly not least is a turtle that Casey named A3. And I'm gonna show you why. Look at this. You wet her down, you can clearly see a lowercase a and the number three. So Casey has named this turtle A3. You will actually see the number three or the letter E on a lot of box turtles. It's just the way that their carapace markings end up, but the clarity of this is really amazing. So A3 had to have one of her front legs amputated also an injury from a vehicle, but she lucked out to where it was just her leg. It was removed by the Turtle Rescue of the Hamptons, and she is now also an educational ambassador. But going back to the common denominator here is their resilience to survive, their want, their need to survive. But it's not just with physical injury. Internally, these turtles can survive things that we as humans often fail at cancer being one of them. This may not be the only time you ever hear this, but when it comes to box turtles, they are actually responsible for the main seed dispersal of the plant mayapple. And that's because they love the fruit of the mayapple. And then when they defecate, they disperse those seeds. Now mayapple is said to have cancer fighting properties in it that could potentially help us humans, but it doesn't stop there. Turtles in general have a very strong resistance against cancer. In fact, some only 1% of turtles are said to actually have cancers of any kind, and that's because they fight against cell damage or cell stress. So there's so much to be learned there about that, but I will tell you, back in 2002, that was the first time I ever heard about cancer in turtles being so rare and them potentially unlocking secrets for us. Uh, it was the June 2002 Discover magazine. On the cover was the skeleton of a T-Rex, and there was a whole article in there about how these animals could maybe one day help us humans with understanding how to fight cancer. So there you go. Three incredibly resilient box turtles here now from Turtle Rescue of the Hamptons, please go support them. Use that link in the description. And uh, A3, Crush, and Penny have a big, beautiful pen to themselves. And uh, I look forward to working with them and continue to educate the public on just how incredible they are. Hey, sorry about that, man. Hey. Sorry I missed your call. So she did good. I mean, so I sedated her. That's good. I was still a little bit groggy from that back slump, but definitely better than what she was last time. Okay. I think the image, it looks pretty similar to me. I don't think it's it's much, too much there. Okay. I, I looked at the new x-ray. I haven't compared it to the other two yet. You know, right off the bat, it doesn't look much different. It's not like it broke up a ton. I mean, I was able to feed like 20 mils of mineral oil into her. Oh, wow. Um, pretty good volume. I mean, directly right into the stomach. So the, the hope is, is that this will really coat around that and get through. I mean, she did have like urate or diarrhea in the stage, which there was like something a little firm in there. So I think the little piece of rock came out again, like a little piece, but we oh. still that big thing that we're dealing with though. And at this point, it's just, let's hope. Let's just cross our fingers and see if we get this thing to move. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, 
About to put Biggins back in the radiated tortoise enclosure and there's a female radiated tortoise right there completing her nest. So that's pretty cool. So she's pretty perked up, still not happy with the way she's walking. She should have that really tall, proud walk that radiateds are known for, but she is moving at a decent pace. Uh, and, you know, we just got home with her. So she's recovered a lot faster this time from the sedation than she did last time. Uh, and she just, something just came out of her. So that's good. Maybe things are starting to move here. Um, I definitely like how perked up she is compared to how she's been. Going back to the situation here and why other things aren't being done. Again, nobody wants to do this insanely invasive surgery if it can be avoided. Everything happens very slowly with turtles and tortoises, so we don't have to worry about her the way we would worry about something like a dog. Some of you had commented on some of the other videos about Biggins. Uh, what about ultrasound uh, therapy or um, burst wave uh, lithotripsy? That stuff is only in the very early developmental stages for animals, so that's not a practical solution for an animal like a radiated tortoise right now. Maybe in the future it would be, that would be great, but right now that's just not something that we can apply to her or try to do. But we can do our own vibration therapy by taking her for rides, placing her on top of the dryer and let it shake. We're trying to loosen things up, we're trying to get things moving, and the fact that she's defecated a couple times now is a plus. And Dr. Lambert did say that uh, he believes there was a little stone in some of the feces that she passed yesterday at his office. So that's good news. All around, I don't think this is a terribly negative situation right now for her. I do think we're taking nice, slow, little baby steps in the right direction. And hey, that's what worked for Rockalina. Totally different situation, but because we took things slow, she is now a powerhouse. So that's what I hope for Biggins. Gonna continue to keep you guys updated, but right now, let's get this radiated tortoise nest. Let's see what we got here. Oh, she packed this in. Oh, I feel one. Oh, there it is. I hope she didn't break any of these eggs with all this gravel. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's probably it because that's a typical size clutch for the species. Yep, that's it. Six eggs. Beautiful eggs. Okay. So what we will actually do with these eggs is put them in something called a diapause. So unlike some of the other tortoise species that you've seen us collect eggs from, these don't go directly into incubation. They'll sit for 24 hours at room temperature and then they'll go into a drier situation inside a wine cooler at about 65 degrees. And then after 30 days, They'll go back into room temperature for 24 hours and then into incubation. And if they're fertile, they'll hatch in somewhere between 90 and 100 days, sometimes a little bit sooner. Uh, radiated tortoises are a critically endangered species. We can't produce enough of these. Uh, they are well represented in captivity to some extent, but they are by no means an animal that ends up in rescue situations. And uh, their numbers have plummeted in Madagascar. So seeing them well represented in captivity is what we want to see. There's a lot of laws pertaining to this species. This is not one you can just go pick up somewhere. But nonetheless, this is great news. It's been a long time since we've hatched radiated tortoises, so hopefully these rounds of eggs that we're gonna start getting will be fertile.